Hey there, YouTube. I'm Jack, and this is Raw Tropical Living. Thanks for joining me today. I'm uh, joined here again with my new roommate, Amanda, and today we're going to talk about how Amanda cleared up her cystic acne with a raw food diet. Guys, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, uh, please go down and hit that subscribe button now. We're going to be doing more videos like that, and I've got lots of good information on here. Uh, so, yep, go hit that button, then click on the little bell and check send notifications so you'll stay subscribed to the channel. Now, when I met you, Amanda, uh, this was about, I guess it was about two years ago, a little over two years ago. Was, and I, yeah, and, I that. and I had seen photos of you, like, you you look a lot different than you do now. You, I mean, you seriously, I mean, you know, I know people that have it are more self-conscious, but yeah, I'm not going to lie. You could tell that you had a... a a definite issue with it and then all of a sudden when you showed up here you know I hadn't seen you face to face in a while so uh, I was just oh. a little uh, surprised at how much you had told me you had mostly cleared it up but I was like I was really surprised at how drastic the change was and guys just to know where she came from let me show you a little photo right here So you see how she was there. So Amanda, just kind of uh, tell me a little background. How long had you, how long have you, had you dealt with that acne that was that bad? Well, not long. I, um, I didn't have really bad acne as a teenager. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I would get pimples, but like I really, I never had very bad acne um, until it sort of first popped up when I got my first like full-time office job um, and I wasn't even out of college I was still like uh, paying as I went to try to finish college <laughs> um, which is a different conversation but I had started working full-time in an office and I had started drinking coffee that kind of coincided mm. with that and around that time I started um, getting more acne like what seemed like maybe not normal for I was maybe like 23 24 at that point okay. um, and that I think there were a series of events through that that uh, the things that they put me on um, one of those wound up being antibiotics I was on antibiotics for my acne right. for like a year oh, around wow. that age so I think that that has to do with the di digestive right. issues and the Crohn's um, and that kind of goes hand in hand with skin issues once you develop digestive issues. So I think later on, um, it, it pretty much went away. And then around 29 years old, I was in a situation that was really stressful at the time. Um, and I was trying to get better control of my health it i mean it was it was good but i was doing some things because i just i i like improving myself so i was kind of like okay i want to level up somehow and um i went like fully raw in a very kind of aggressive way okay. um i recommend for a lot of people who might have issues to maybe not do the overnight thing maybe transition see like what your skin might respond to um, but I was really missing salt at that point and there were a lot of foods that I was eating that kind of had that umami flavor because I was trying to not use any salt. Right. And um, some of those foods, I think, combined with my effort to be this kind of like pure raw vegan huh. <laughs> that was kind of ridiculous. I completely overhauled my skincare routine, like everything, everything changed all at once. And my face completely freaked out and that was around when we met oh, okay um and, so, and just for a little clarity here were you when this first started had you become vegan yet yeah i was vegan were, okay. i was already like two years before that or so okay. i had already gone vegan for like the crone situation so oh, okay the the actual issue lasted um of probably seven or eight months maybe a little longer than that where it was like really really bad before I started at least getting some relief and then when it started going away it wasn't like it went away overnight it was a gradual process right. very gradual um, and it was really like mentally and emotionally kind of traumatic because I was practically 30 years old and I had the acne that like 
maybe a really like a teenager who was like struggling would have I mean it just covered my whole face um so so yeah like literally I I like little kids or um different people would kind of stare at me a little bit at the grocery store I would catch them staring right. at me it was really awkward and uh it was embarrassing because like you could tell that you know other people were staring at it and like noticing um so yeah I guess overall it was a few months it was not that long it was definitely less than a year um but it, it felt like forever because every right. day felt like forever it also really really itched um and I do think and we'll get to it that there was like some food sensitivities okay. that were what was the point okay you were dealing with it what was the point do you remember a point or a certain thing you started to do where you start like after you had gone raw maybe too aggressively raw where you started to see a change and it did start to work for you i did an elimination diet um i saw a lot of doctors and i was open to like whatever might actually help so i want to be clear that this is also this is just personal story not not a doctor myself right. or a nutritionist or anything um dermatologist nothing um uh, i don't even know that much science on this one um it's just more of my personal story but i had seen a lot of doctors and most of what they recommended didn't help there was one doctor and then one uh, kind of holistic nutritionist that I consulted with virtually that sort of the two things that they recommended combined seemed to Was that work. the first doctor that even mentioned diet when you were doing this? He or? didn't mention diet. So none of the doctors actually mentioned well, eating or food? Let me take that back. They did mention diet, but I wasn't eating any of right. the things. That, they're like, okay. so cut out dairy. And I'm like, I'm vegan. <laughs> right. So what are you going to do? Um, they're like, cut out gluten. I'm like, I'm raw. So right. like, I'm not having that either. Uh, so they did, a lot of them, to their credit, did mention some diet stuff. But it okay. was like chocolate, dairy, and like gluten kind of stuff. Like things that I already wasn't right. having. Um, the holistic nutritionist definitely focused on diet and sh she put me on an elimination diet and um, I'd have to look back at my notes at the time but there was something um, it's kind of like the naturally occurring MSG basically because there's a type of MSG that is essentially naturally occurring in different foods and it gives certain foods that umami flavor okay. and since I had really gone head first into this raw vegan thing at the time and I was trying to do it in a very specific way um, I was consulting with someone at the time and I think that just what I was going through was not what she was particularly experienced with she had right. a different set of expertise and so it was really confusing for her and um, I just wound up it uh, certain foods like mushrooms seaweed um, raw tomatoes, cooked tomatoes seem to be okay, but raw tomatoes and, um, I mean, chocolate, definitely right. like a lot of cacao. If I had chocolate, banana, like that was my next question. Does it, day. does it even translate down to raw, like just plain cacao as well? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can overdo it. So foods that have higher amounts of that, it's kind of like a threshold that I have and um, raw corn. And so I was making certain things that were very like savory for dinner that were right. like raw savory kind of to things. To try to satisfy that salty. Yes. And I would have been better off just having the A salt, little bit of salt <laughs> at right. the time. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so are, are there any, do you still have to watch some of those foods like tomatoes or do, now do you have to not eat them at all? Or obviously I've seen you eat some tomatoes. So you just yeah. have to, like you say, you know, your threshold. Yep. Do you know about how much, do you actually know your threshold? Well, I couldn't give you a measurement. It's more But like, you just kind of know, you eat. know how much you can eat. Yes. Without having it. And it's not something like I, if I really wanted to, I could have like a ton one day. And right. then, but if I did that, then like none for like two weeks or something, uh, okay. or I can have a little bit each day, but they, and they all add up together. So if I have a little bit of mushrooms and a little bit of chocolate, hopefully not in the same thing <laughs> <laughs> and like a little bit of raw tomatoes over here. And you know, if those things all happened in the same day, then those little bits would all add up. Right. Um, so they're, they're cumulative. Um, uh, so they, 
it, 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 it's, it gives me, in my opinion, actually a lot of flexibility still, because I can eat those things. Right. It's just a certain threshold. And the other thing that happens is when I am really stressed, that threshold drops. <laughs> Then I get like, which is very frustrating. I think the stress amplifies like, everything. Like uh -huh. any problem you have in the body, no matter what it is related, I think stress yeah. just amplifies it in yeah. everything. Stress just kills. Yeah. Yeah. So do you still, I mean, like some of these foods now, do you still ever, do you ever get breakouts? Yeah. Well, I mean, not the not way like, that obviously, I did right. Then. Yeah. But I'll get like, one pimple, two pimples, three pimples. Here is that kind of like a little like warning different. system for you? Like, okay, now I might better, I've been doing something or maybe I ate a little too much of this or I did a little too much of that. It can be. Or maybe, okay, maybe it's been a stressful period, like you just moved everything or whatever. Um, so it could be a number of those things, I guess. Yeah, it can be. Uh, it can be that. It could be lack of sleep. Um, but there are other things like when I'm exercising a lot, and especially if I'm exercising outside, um, I like to get sweat off of my face quickly. If I have just like sweat sitting on my face, that's usually not good. So there are things that are totally not diet related or even like face product related. But right. Just uh, my, I do seem to have like more sensitive skin. And I do think that that ties back to all the digestive issues that I've had. Once you kind of got to the doctor, the, nutri the nutritionist doctor, with uh, that st and you started doing the elimination diet, like, I, I'm not putting an exact number on it, but how long, how long was the path? Once you got to that point, how long did it take after that till you really started? Um, so this is kind of where I, it, it wasn't just her help. It was hers plus a very, like, standard Western, uh, like, doctor some of his recommendations. I'm not against using certain chemicals on my face. I was using them before I did all of that and changed everything and it was working fine. And I think if I had um, definitely cruelty free versions of those things now, that's, that, that's a good thing to do. Um, and if I wanted to start taking them out, I would do maybe one at a time and testing other things. Instead, at that point, I had tried to, for the sake of purity, get rid of all of these chemicals that I had been using and maybe in the long run it would be good for my skin but doing it all at once is too much you're right. just asking for trouble so so it was the elimination diet but it was also honestly adding in some chemicals on my skin I'm kind of like the unnatural raw vegan <laughs> okay so why don't you actually that's a good thing why don't you t just briefly you don't have to tell everything you do well, what is your skincare routine other than what you eat and how you eat yeah, um, so that's that's a pretty big rabbit hole. Uh, I definitely try to do a lot of um, exfoliation, but uh, using sort of more like manual exfoliation, like uh, more abrasive exfoliation doesn't work well for my skin. So um, a lot of acid type things, I'd never know if I'm saying these words right, but Salicylic acid. Okay. <laughs> I know how to read it. I don't. Right. I, I don't know how to say it. Um, that's a good one that seems to exfoliate my skin really well. That I had cut out at that point in time. Um, I do use a little bit of benzoyl peroxide. It was a cystic acne situation. There's going to be probably a ton of people in the comments or whoever sees this that are you know going to be against that. Um, but I do use a little bit of that. I do use a little bit of um, like an adapalene gel, I think right. it's called. Um, that one actually helps with the acne scars as well. It kind of helps your skin cells renew themselves. Okay. Um, and then I use very, very, uh, I, I do use moisturizers, but they're very gentle. They're things with like a hyaluronic acid base. And um, I have another one. I'd have to look at the name, but I do have sort of a lighter cream, um, again, cruelty free and it's made for sensitive skin. It has things in it that I wish it didn't have in it, but it doesn't make my face break out. Um, so, so the skincare routine is pretty, I would say pretty involved. Like I have quite a few products that I just listed that are involved on any given day. Um, but switching back to that and using cruelty free options cause they are out there. Um, previously I was using Clinique, which is like a mixed bag. Um, right. 
they might have stopped selling in China, but at, at the time they definitely were. Um, so, so finding those cruelty-free versions and uh, still being able to use the things that worked on my skin and just letting go of that like pursuit of purity kind of that wasn't really serving me um, helped a lot. Plus the elimination diet, um, that was really interesting because doing that brought me back off of raw foods. I had to do a lot of things like steamed vegetables and I was allowed some quinoa. Um, I even had to be careful with oats because she was saying that um, even if you get organic oats that it's still fairly common for um, some pesticides to just get on them because they tend to be grown closer to other things that are not mm -hmm. pesticide free. So that was sort of another element was doing lots and lots of organic foods because it could be uh, certain pesticides could kind of instigate that. Um, and switching to distilled water, uh, that I'm not sure if it's totally required. I don't think that it's a big issue, but at the point that I was at, part of the purpose of the elimination diet was to kind of flush out of my system right. the extra, again, naturally occurring. I'm not saying these foods are bad for you. I eat mushrooms now, but the extra naturally occurring MSG that had kind of built up at that point to cause such uh, such a breakout and to a degree with all of the food sensitivities, it, it, it was almost like a combination breakout plus allergic reaction kind of a thing because it was just so itchy. It was so itchy. Huh. That's interesting. I don't think I've ever heard that aspect when I've heard people, women, mostly women. I mean, let's say it. It's mostly women, although I have seen some men that also deal with this, but yeah. I've heard that same thing. I, I mean, I haven't heard that before about it being itchy. Yeah. Um, I think part of the reason that it was itchy probably was because at this point I was also frantically trying all of these new things, trying to get it to go away. And it could have, could you think it could, the itching could have come possibly from some, something you were using as much so as from just the acne? Totally. Okay. Totally. I had switched when I tried to be all like pure, I had tried right. to use, um, it was recommended to me. I don't recommend this <laughs> to use essentially, um, tea tree oil and like a cloth to help clean my face and then uh, I, I know some other people who like oils different oils do really well on their face and they're able to do things like that for anti-aging benefits and stuff and that's freaking awesome but it just doesn't work for my skin right. the number one thing that you can do when you're looking for the right skincare solution is to make sure that the advice that you're taking applies to your unique situation, your unique skin. Right. Because people have very different skin. So what works for one person, I have kind of combination skin. Um, it tends, if anything, to be on more of the oily side. Right. Um, so definitely not dry skin. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually not lacking for moisture. Right. <laughs> Which I'm told is great for aging, but not so great for acne. Gotcha. So you, you get one or the other. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to sum it up, just act like this. And once again, she's not a doctor. This is just from her personal experience. But if, say, a young woman in her late 20s, 30 years old, was having the same product pro problem, what would your advice be? And I'm not like I say, don't, I'm not saying eat this, do this, but just to give them a little encouragement that it can be done. What would you just, what would you tell them? Yeah. Um, so actually something that I didn't get to look into at that time and, and have since learned a little bit more about around that age, your hormones can start shifting a little bit. So it can definitely be a hormonal situa situation. Get your hormones tested. Talk with a doctor who is, knowledgeable on those things, um, okay. especially on women's hormones, because there's all kinds of different things that can happen there. Um, so that, I would say definitely look into an elimination diet, because it's pretty likely, it, I'm not saying that it'll all get resolved through right. diet, but it's likely that that's contributing to it. Um, so look into that, consult with some uh, holistic nutritionist if you can. Um, Definitely get your stress levels under control and get enough sleep because that's not helping you right. <laughs> if you're stressed. And uh, the last one would be finding the right skincare for yourself. 
that is really hard. Um, and that's very, in, do you, would you say that's very individual for the whole, like, are, are you kind of a special case in other words, or is it very individual for each person? I think that it's pretty individual. I would hesitate to recommend specific products to people for that reason. Um, there are some that I think help a lot of people, but again, I, without knowing somebody's specific right. skin, I would hesitate. Um, I will say a piece of advice that I just didn't have the patience for at that point in time, and I get not having patience with it because it just, it sucks so much. I have my own company that I've been running for eight years, and we do, I work remotely, but we do um, video conferences often, and I do have public speaking engagements sometimes for that business, and there's you know, in-person meetings that do happen sometimes. And I had to do all of those things with my face looking like that. Right. And it's the impression somebody else thinks they do this. If you're overweight too, it's unfortunate, but I know it's a reality. If people see you and you don't look like based on their perception, like you're taking care of yourself, right. They kind of don't trust you as much with your job, like with what you're supposed to be doing. Cause if you can't take care of yourself, how are you right. taking care of them as a client? How are you taking care of your business, your employees or contractors or whatever? Right. So it really does, I get not having patience about it. Like it, it really does kind of leak into every aspect of your life. But when you are trying new skincare products, be patient. You can't know which one is helping or causing an issue if you don't do them one at a time and then wait at least two weeks, if not four weeks before trying something else. If it's working great, if you want to add in something else, you, you just you just have to wait. It's almost it like similar concept as the elimination diet. If you're if you're if you're using too many and mixing them up at one time, you don't if, if something goes wrong, you don't know what which one is causing that. So easier just to go step by step. Yeah, when you do an elimination diet, you get down to like the bare bones kind of situation. And for me, that was about two weeks or so that I did that before we started. What happens is you start testing foods as you try them back in. And those you have to give time. Um, those I found that I could do a little bit more rapidly. Like I was, and maybe I was pushing it, but um, a, a few days at least sort of one at a time that was grueling too because elimination diets are just boring like they're not fun <laughs> they're really not fun if people think that it's restrictive to be like vegan or raw vegan or whatever try an elimination diet <laughs> it's <is> very boring <laughs> <laughs> well, this was great. This opens up like every time we have a conversation, I start thinking about others that we can have because I'm already thinking like the gut biome because it it's affected, you know, your skin as far yeah. as well as the, that part. And then also you brought into there how the stress relates to that. Mm -hmm. And then also you've got a lot of, you know, you've had a lot of practical uh, experience with your hormone with hormones and that kind of issue and i should mention to you guys i should have mentioned into it earlier like i say she's not an expert but she's very knowledgeable a lot of, a lot of the science of this she did um Do, uh, t colin campbell's uh, e cornell is mm -hmm. the e cornell uh online learning about a year or so ago yeah um, and, and, and i'm telling you some of the things she tells me about that it's a phenomenal course um, i would like yeah. to carve out the time and do that myself sometime but um anyhow we're gonna have more videos um i hope you enjoyed this one today i hope you get some uh you know use out of it or some information out of it if you like this one please give us a thumb up and we'll see you again later this week peace